The guitar strings you play are a very personal choice and there's no shortage of options out there today. In fact, if you're new at guitar, this can be downright confusing. One of the biggest choices you have to make regardless of brand or the size of the string is whether you're gonna play coded strings or plain strings. I've gone back and forth. I've played both coded and plain strings in my guitar career. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my experience with them. And then we're gonna do a blind sound test to see if you can tell the difference between coded and plain strings. Hopefully the next time you go to make a string purchase, this helps you to decide if coded strings are worth it. If you've been playing guitar for a while, you've no doubt heard of Elixir guitar strings. They're probably the name most synonymous with coded guitar strings. In fact, they were the first guitar string manufacturer to go to market with coded strings in 1997. However, both Rohrbacher Technologies and D'Addario both also applied for patents for coded guitar strings in the 1990s. Although Elixir strings were the first available to the public, coded guitar strings actually go back another 20 something years. In the 1970s, luthier David A. Santo started coding his strings with poly tetrafluorothylene fluorocarbon resin. I think I said that right. And for those of us non-science guys out there, that's just Teflon. Yeah, the same thing that we used to coat our non-stick frying pans with before we realized it was probably gonna give us cancer. The coating he was applying to his strings was between one and one and a half millimeters thick, which really impacted the overall tone negatively, although his theory was totally spot on. His idea was that if you coat the wound strings, it's gonna prevent all the little gaps from getting filled with dirt and grime from your fingers, making the strings last longer. That's the exact same way coated strings work today, although with better technology, we're just able to apply a thinner coating that sticks a little bit better and doesn't affect the sound of the strings all that much. All modern coated strings now also treat your plain strings so that they last longer as well. Like I mentioned, Elixir was the first to launch in 1997 with actually a pretty slow start. Guitar players were hesitant to try these coated strings, so what Elixir did was they sent out 5,000 sets to a whole bunch of musicians worldwide, including a bunch of students at the Berklee College of Music to try their coated strings so they could see that they were actually really really good. At the time, they only offered their polyweb coating, which is currently the thickest of their offerings, and I would argue affects the tone of the strings the most. In 2002, D'Addario would launch their EXP coated strings. In 2008, Ernie Ball would launch their titanium acoustic coated slinkies. And since then, we've seen more and more advancements in the coated string world. I first tried coated strings back in 2006. I remember going down to the local music shop and spending about 20 bucks on a set of coated polyweb strings, putting them on my $200 Fender acoustic, and I hated them. To my discerning 17 year old ear, they sounded kind of dead and they felt awkwardly slippery. I just really didn't like the way they felt compared to what I'd been using previously, which was just plain D'Addario EJ 16s. After that, I went right back to my trusted EJ 16 strings and didn't think about it for more than a decade. Fast forward to about two years ago and I purchased this guitar, which is a Stonebridge D22 SR, sight unseen online. That's something I'd never done before and not something I really recommend unless you know it's a really reputable shop, which I did for this and I'd played a couple of these stone bridges before. They're unbelievable value for the money and I really wanted to try one out for myself. It came from Brickhouse Guitars in Kitchener, so I had a good chat with the guys over the phone, decided I wanted to go ahead with it, and my sister at the time was living in Guelph. I had her pick it up and bring it home. And I took it out of the case, started playing it, totally fell in love with it, but one thing I really noticed was that the strings felt a lot different than I was used to, and in kind of a good way. I played it for about a week before I changed the strings to my trusty EJ-16s, and I actually didn't like it as much with those strings. So naturally, I called the guitar shop immediately and I asked them what was on it. Turns out it was the Elixir strings that I'd previously hated. However, it wasn't the slippery weird polyweb strings I didn't like, I know some of you guys do. It was the more thin nano web coating, which I've actually come to really like and it's what I've been using on my guitar since that day. The fact that they cost more than double the price of normal strings was something I had to get used to and figure out if it was worth it for myself. Before becoming a full-on Elixir user, I sat down and I made a pros and cons list to try and decide what was right for me. The first thing that really stood out to me was the feel of the strings. Since the strings coated with something, you're definitely gonna feel it. It is a little bit slipperier, but I do find the nano webs have a really pleasant feel. I actually think it's one of the benefits because the coating to me makes the strings squeak a little bit less when you're moving from one position to the next. I really noticed that when I started recording and I really, really like that about them. The next big difference I noticed was the consistency in the quality of the sound over the life of the string. 
The elixirs sound almost identical through the entire life of the string. This is definitely not something I can say for non-coded strings. For me, this is a huge benefit because whenever I go to record my guitar, I pretty much know exactly what it's gonna sound like. The most obvious benefit is that they last longer, and yes, that's absolutely true. In my experience, they do last the two to three times longer that they claim. In fact, for me, they never actually sound dead, and I know it's time to change my strings when they get buzzy. So I'm basically not actually changing them because they sound dead, I've just played them so much that the frets have dented the underside of the string and they just buzz. Probably one of the most obvious and glaring factors to consider is the cost, because yes, they definitely cost a lot more money. However, I do find that I'm changing my strings way less often, in the long run probably saving myself money and definitely saving myself time. Back when I only had one acoustic guitar, I didn't mind having to change my strings every couple of weeks. It was just one guitar, it really wasn't that much of a pain in the butt. Now that I have a couple acoustic guitars and I'm doing a lot of recording work here from home, one of the worst things in the world is when I'm in the middle of cutting a song, I go to grab an acoustic guitar and it's got dead strings on it. Since switching to coded strings, this almost never happens. None of these factors matter if you don't like the sound of them though. So let's go ahead and do a blind test. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna compare Elixir Nano Webs to D'Addario EJ. 16, because in my experience, these are two of the most popular acoustic guitar strings on the market. Let me know in the comments, are you a coded string user or are you a plain string user? And then before I do the big reveal, take your best guess at which is which. So what do you guys think? Do you think you were able to tell the difference between the coded and the non-coded strings? Well, here's how it breaks down. In the strumming example, A was the coded strings, the elixirs, and B was the D'Addario EJ-16s. In the flat picking example, A again was the elixirs, and B was the D'Addario's. And in the finger picking example, A was D'Addario, and B was elixir. How many of them did you get right? Did you get all three? Did you get a couple? Or did you get absolutely none? If you found this helpful, I would super appreciate it if you could click that like button and then subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any more future content like this. To my ears, both strings sounded really good, but I think I'm gonna continue using coded strings just because of the longevity. I have to change my strings less, and in the long run, I truly believe I'm spending less money. My next video coming out is going to compare Elixir coded strings to the newer D'Addario XS coded strings, and it's gonna appear here as soon as it's ready. So make sure you click that to check it out. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention in such a noisy world, and I hope you get out there and make some music.